wanted to know more about water, the incubation, societal side of things. Sir, shall we start, sir? Good morning, sir. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's shall we start, sir? At disposal. Please enable screen sharing. Namaskar. Kindly enable screen sharing. Namaskar. Every sunrise is a new opportunity. We should not miss it. We should wake up and enjoy the sun. A very cheerful good morning to all respected dignitaries and viewers of this program. Meet the personality and initiative part, the Department of Mathematics, Tolani College of Arts and Science. This is 30th episode and on behalf of organizing committee, I, Mitesh J. Patel, extend a very warm and heartily welcome to you all from circumference of my heart. This is a very beautiful morning and a 25th August is an auspicious day, Reverend Kata Previdas Tulani's birth anniversary. The credit goes to Kaka Prithidas Tolani for a creating wonderful Tolani Vidya Mandir campus, which includes seven colleges, Tolani Eye Hospital, and many more at Adipur Kutch. It's our proud privilege to welcome an eminent personality. Patashri, Professor T. Pradeep Sir, who is an Institute Professor and Deepak Parikh Chair Professor at IIT Madras. We are very fortunate to have Professor A. H. Karno Sir, Trustee, Gandhidam College Board with us today. We are always blessed by President Gandhidam Collegiate Board and a person of humanity, Madam Anjana Hazari, Professor Alex Bariyani sir, Professor Vankateswaru sir, Principal of our college, Dr. Shushil Dharmani sir, and Head of the Mathematics Department, Dr. Rajesh Thakkar sir. I am very much confident that this program will change our perspective of life. A prayer purifies our mind and soul. So let's start our program with the presence of Supreme Authority. I would like to request Mrs. Kajal Chaya, musically accompanied by our alumni, Kaushal Bhai Chaya and Dutch Chaya for a prayer. So let's start prayer.
thank you very much for making a holy atmosphere to welcome is to show honor to welcome is to establish integrity i would like to invite our mentor and source of inspiration our principal dr shushil darmani sir to welcome our guest and viewers please sir namaskar सुप्रभात सर वनकम मैं सुशील नरमानी प्राचार्य तोलानी कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स एंड साइंस आज मेरा यह परम सौभाग्य है कि इस सुखद दिवस पर हम इस अंतर्राष्ट्रीय जाल पर मिल रहे हैं जब काका रविदास तोलानी जी का जन्म दिवस मनाया जा रहा है जिस कैंपस का हेतु क्वालिटी एजुकेशन और होलिस्टिक डेवलपमेंट है उस वक्त हमारे डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैथ्स ने आज के दिन नृत्य पर्सनालिटी के इस नए एपिसोड में समस्त लोगों को जोड़ने की कोशिश की है सबसे पहले मैं स्वागत करना चाहूंगा हमारे ट्रस्टी डॉक्टर एच कालरो सर जो लगातार हमें ये कहते रहते हैं कि हमारी ड्यूटी क्या है वी हैव टू परस्यू एक्सेलेंस वी हैव टू परस्यू रिसर्च कालरो सर आपके शब्दों को हम सिद्ध करने के लिए आज उपस्थित हुए हैं और इसी प्रयोग को आगे बढ़ाते हुए हमारे मैथ्स डिपार्टमेंट ने एक अनन्य कोहिनूर हीरोए को आज मीट द पर्सनैलिटी में मेहमान बनाया है मैं स्वागत करता हूं हमारे प्रोफेसर टी प्रदीप जी का सर चाहेंगे कि जल्दी से हम रूबरू मिले और आप हमारे बच्चों को आप कहा से कहा तक पहुंचे हैं और इतना रिसर्च कैसे कर लेते हैं उसका सीक्रेट शेयर करें कम से कम आज जब हम लोग इस ऑनलाइन कार्यक्रम में उपस्थित हुए हैं दे वुड लव टू हियर फ्रॉम यू सर योर जर्नी एज अ स्टूडेंट एंड टू हियर हाउ यू हैव रीच टू द साइटेशन ऑफ मोर देन थ्री थाउजेंड थर्टी थाउजेंड इफ आई एम नॉट मिस्टेक एंड बाय द टाइम आई टॉक इट इज ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीजिंग लाइक शेयर मार्केट वी वेलकम यू सर आज हमारे इस ऑनलाइन सेमिनार में अन्य बहुत सारे स्कॉलर्स जुड़े हैं विद्यार्थी जुड़े हैं मैं सबका स्वागत कर रहा हूं ज्यादा समय नहीं लूंगा बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू हियर बॉथ ऑफ यू जेंटलमैन विद दिस काइंड वर्ड्स आई वुड एंड एंड वी विश दैट वेरी सोन वी शेल ऑल सिट टूगेदर टू हियर यू इन पर्सन थैंक यू सर thank you very much sir for your cordial welcome and now i call upon a leader of our team and pillar of this program dr rajesh patel sir head of the mathematics department at our college i would like to invite sir to say about the purpose of this program please sir thank you dr mitesh for your kind words distinguished guests dear faculty members students and uh, viewers at the outset i bow my head to reverend kaka prabhas tolani who let us play lamp of education in this remote border area of india people like kaka may not be physically with us but their deeds and their reputation are immortal there is one popular phrase in english to be on cloud 
it means extremely happy. So we can definitely say that we are on cloud nine today because today there are two distinguished dignitaries are with us. We are extremely honored to have a man with a mission, Padma Shri, Professor T. Pradeep sir with us. We are so grateful that he accepted our invitation and added the glory to this show. We are fortunate that our beloved Professor A.H. Kalro sir is also with us to grace this occasion. And I will talk about the purpose and journey of this program in very brief. The first purpose, I may fragment it into two small parts. The first part is that many of us from the teaching fraternity had a feeling that just covering a syllabus in classrooms is not sufficient for the overall development of a student. In fact, there is a famous quote by American journalist Sidney Harris that the whole purpose of education is to turn mirrors into windows. So we started with a focus on reading activity of students. We launched a small program of compulsory reading on every Friday for senior students. And then to add some more depth in this idea, our college launched this program known as Meet the Personality, which connects genuinely successful people to our students. We always believe that interactions with such scholarly people helps a lot to add, to think and dream big and better. We never thought that this will be such a long series, but now we have completed seven years of this program, and this is the 13th episode of this program. The second purpose I may think of is that such shows highlight the significance of hard work and moral values. When uh, most of our students are from very humble background, and when they see that our personalities also came from a very humble background, but then they created a magic with their hard work, then they are inspired a lot. One of these byproducts of this product program may be that students learn a few management skills also. All planning of uh, these programs is generally done by the students. And uh, so they learn a lot how to plan about any activity. So I end with a small announcement that after Pradeep sir's speech, there is a special time for the question and answers with Pradeep sir. So if any student, any viewer wants to ask any question, then please send us through the YouTube chat or our WhatsApp numbers. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much sir for sharing this fascinating journey of the program, Meet the Personality. We have with us today yet another inspiring, inspiring personality, Dr. H. Carlo sir. He is an educationist and has worked tireless for more than 45 years in academics and institutions in India and abroad. He was director at IAM Kozigon, was dean and professor at IAM Ahmedabad, provost Ahmedabad University and was assistant professor at University of Minnesota, US. So I request Professor Kano sir to please say the words of motivation. Please, sir. Unmute. On the unmute, can I get a question? Sir, please uh, unmute. Yes. yes, sir. Mr. Mohan, good morning to all. It is indeed a great privilege and honor for me to be with all of you today to celebrate the 128th birth anniversary 
of revered Kaka Tulani. And of course, this occasion has been made even more joyful for us with the presence of our honorable guest today, Professor Pradeep, who is going to address us and inspire us with his words of motivation and, of course, lessons that he can provide us from his own life's journey from early childhood to the position that he has occupied today, where he is respected not only in his own professional circles, his own colleagues, but by others throughout the world, and of course, our nation's policymakers as well. I will just take a few minutes to talk about Kaka Pridhas Tulani because his life and his contributions to society are indeed a good, good storybook. Kaka Tulani hailed from a very wealthy family in they were landowners with a lot of property and wealth. But they utilized their wealth very, very judiciously in supporting the development of their region and the people in that region. When partition struck the country, the part that he hailed from became Pakistan. And given his position in Pakistan, he was arrested for no crime of his and put into prison. And he stayed in prison for some time. But fortunately, better sense prevailed. He was freed and he came to what is now Bharat, India after partition with just the clothes he was wearing. The Pakistan government and its personnel made sure that he carried nothing with him. He was allowed to leave with only the clothes that he had on. And he stepped into the India that we know through Kutch. Incidentally, all the people present today except perhaps for me, will not know about the horrors of partition. I also belong to the same region, sir. My family belong to the same region, sir. And we are aware of the horrors that partition has inflicted on us. But the wonderful example that we have is that unlike so many other communities, the Sindhis never asked for aid from anybody. They went about rehabilitating themselves and building their future. So much so that today you find them in practically every country in the world driving the wheels of business. But I want to go back to Kaka Tolani because when he came into Kutch, there was this great need that he had to try and settle down and provide for his own living because there was nothing that he had with him. And there was a family as well to be looked after who fortunately had already come to India earlier and were in Bombay. Now, in Kutch, he was struck by the situation of the people the lack of development and the fact that there wasn't much that was being done to provide some kind of support to the people to alleviate the difficult conditions. Even though the then king, the Maharaja of Kutch, was a very progressive person and he did whatever he could at that point of time 
But the government of India had still come, not yet time to recognize what was needed for these people. So Kaka Tulani first went about engaging himself in small businesses, basically construction activity. And that construction activity also dealt largely with minor irrigation projects to bring water for domestic use, drinking purposes of humans and animals in that region. And he also recognized early that the engine of development had to be education. And education would also be an engine of social change. So both of these causes would be well served, which were so badly needed at that time. If he could do something about education in that area. And he picked on higher education because that access was absolutely not available to people in that region. He started with actually taking over a small college. And with that takeover, he began his foray into education. And later on, he went on adding more and more institutions to the whole, which are today part of Tulani Vidya Mandir. And as we all know, some of these colleges are granted aid colleges. That is, after government of Gujarat came into being, it took over these colleges as grantable colleges. And some of them are what we call as self-financed institutions. But today, it's a thriving institution with several colleges which cater to the education of more than 20,000 students spread over all these institutions and elsewhere. Another remarkable feature that I would like to bring to the attention of all today is that Kaka Tulani suffered from a hereditary disease of the eyes. And he became totally blind, totally blind. And despite his lack of vision to see, he developed this other vision to look at the future of the nation and the people of Gujarat and Kutch in particular. And this accounted for the sustained effort that he made to grow these institutions, provide education to students, provide employment opportunities to educationists, teachers, and indeed contribute to the development of the area, the region. And today, I would also like to recall the fact that when he died, he left all he owned. I repeat, he left all that he owned to education and his institutions. So he did not bequeath them the assets that he had earned to his family members the wealth that he earned. And he, he earned quite a bit with his business activities, which went along with his interest in education. And his children, his son, his daughter, continued with the cause of education, always. And the Tulani Foundation, today both in Bombay and in Adipur, pursues the cause of education in different parts of the country. So today we bow our heads in gratitude and appreciation to Kaka Tulani for what he has done for all of us in this, in this region. And I only hope and pray that those who are part of this institution now Wear this mantle well and not only contribute to the cause of education, 
but building institutions of excellence where they are actually working. Now, we, we, we do know that our country is full of paradoxes. And one of the paradoxes that we have in this country is what has happened to our educational institutions which have reached the pinnacle of excellence on the one hand. And on the other, a large number of institutions which are languishing and not going anywhere. So much so that higher education itself appears to be threatened. And we are now seeking to implement the new education policy 2020, which was announced in July, end of July last year. But as was mentioned, we need to, we need to above all imply that it is our solemn duty to educate and educate well our successors, the future generations. And that can be done only if we, who are the teachers, who are the managers of these institutions, who are the policy makers of these institutions, understand what it is required to promote excellence in these institutions. Excellence is a misused word. We talk about it, but we do that precious little to implement what is required to achieve that goal. And therefore, I want to compliment the college today, Tulani College of Arts and Science, and also the mathematics department in particular, for arranging this talk by a person who has not only understood the meaning of excellence in his profession, who actually lives and breathes it all the time, and will serve as a great motivator for others to practice the kinds of things he has been doing. And indeed, to make us all try to approach the kinds of goals that he has set for himself in cross. So Professor Pradeep, my hearty welcome to you today. I'm very glad to see you with us. And we look forward to your very, very motivating and inspiring talk. I may add that I've now forgotten how many decades ago we met first, Professor Pradeep and I. It was in IIT Madras only. <laughs> I was at that time in IIM Ahmedabad, and we had in fact participated in some programs together. But somewhere along the line, I think we lost touch. So it's doubly rewarding to see you here on this virtual platform. I hope that at some point of time, we'll also get a chance to meet again. And you will be also able to give us interesting ideas and thoughts to carry on the purpose that Kaka Tulani started and help us achieve our goals of excellence. So thank you very much for this opportunity for me to say a few words. I'm sorry I've taken a, more, a little bit more time and time that you would have liked to give to Professor Pradeep, but I hope you will all forgive me. I wanted to remind us all about what Kaka Tulani did and the mantle that we have to carry, the debt that we owe, and which we need to discharge. Thank you very much. Good day. And welcome to all those who are participating in this webinar. I'm missing our president, Madam Hazari, but I hope she'll get well soon enough and will be with us again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. And now we come to the part you have been waiting for. But before I invite our speaker of the day, Padmashri Professor K. Pradit, sir, we have a small video on Pradit, sir. Let's watch it.
Community College. I'm talking to you from the lab in which you did your postdoc in 1993. And as you can see, we've got instrumentation here which comes from that period. I think what you learned in your time here, Pradeep, was the value of instrumentation, the fact that instruments produce new science. And you went from here with that understanding and with that intention of creating state-of-the-art instruments in India at a time when it was very difficult to do that. And you've succeeded remarkably. Okay, Pradeep, so a little bit of a tour of some of the things we're doing nowadays. So we're still working with traps, with iron trap mass spectrometers. We're recording all of the data, all of the time, in a way that allows us to completely characterize complex mixtures in a single experiment. As you can see, there's a lot of electronics, there's quite a lot of chemistry as well, and the combination is a powerful combination. Just a comment to the students of Talani College, uh, your guest today, Pradeep, is not only an outstanding scientist, but he's also a warm and a generous person. So I'm standing next to the statue of the Buddha that he brought to us as a gift in our lab. He carried it on the aircraft in, in his hand luggage, and this is a very heavy piece of stone. And it's very, very much appreciated. But Pradeep is like that. Now, he gives time and he gives effort to many, many people and many, many organizations. So now we're visiting the conference room, and Pradeep, you spent a lot of time in this in this room, and there's many more photographs on the wall than there were when you were here. So we've had a lot of people over the years that have spent time in this lab, uh, and you stand out amongst those people as a really, really high achiever. So we're going to we're going backwards through the years from the present. We're now down 2001 back into the 1990s, and here we come to the first photograph in which we see you, Pradeep, 1993, uh, the group of about 25 people at that time, and there you are in the front row, uh, leading the effort that we undertook at that time to understand uh, complexes, molecular complexes. <laughs> I am really in deep emotions right now. I, I didn't, uh, you surprised me. I didn't know all these that you are doing. And just so glad to see Professor Graham Cooks. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know how you contacted him and how he managed time for all these. Uh, he was not doing well, but uh, he, he made time for these. Very surprising and thank you. Graham, kind words are really, you know, bringing tears to my eyes. Will you allow me to share my screen? I have, uh, I will do that in a bit after some, a, a few minutes, but please allow me to share uh, my screen. Professor Caldro talked about uh, Reverend Tulani. And one important message that uh, Professor Kalro talked about was agents of development, they are water and education. And that realization does not happen that well to many of us, but it happened so early in the life 
of Tulani. Kaka Tulani could have probably in my, I don't know the history about that region and what he went through, but uh, Professor Caldro gave that brief glimpses into that. And obviously, the partition and experiences of that would have made him realize the enormous power of water in moving people and bringing societies back to action. And he must have obviously recognized the power of education as well. So addressing you from another part of the uh, country where we are endowed with water around us all the time. I'm from a region, I walk through the paddy fields all my time, four kilometers one way to my school, splashing water and, and playing with the paddy, the leaves, the flowers and the grain and picking many things on the way, and probably talking to fish, schools of fish in the, in the little ponds that we saw. Those, those, that childhood transformed me to contribute something to my society, my country. Let me tell you a few things about that, because this is an occasion to get inspired from the experiences of someone. I wouldn't call myself as someone who has accomplished. I just wanted to do something. I just wanted to do something. And I was always hungry to do something because you know, you, I went on, I studied, but I realized that uh, after MSc, I realized that I know nothing about chemistry. So I wanted to do a PhD. And uh, when you do a PhD, you know, you see people of uh, such eminence, like my own advisor, Professor Sienara, I didn't know that he was so big. Because I am from a village, I had not seen people like him. I, I saw him and I realized that this person, well, I thought that he is like my college professor. But, but he was an ocean, an ocean, a walking encyclopedia. You walk with people like that, you get transformed. And this is what had happened to me. And as he went to the Indian Institute of Science director's office, he was a director at that time. He would come on his way, he had very little time. He was also the advisor to the prime minister. He had very little time. He would come rushing on his way to the administrative building. Hey, you have time? And I would go for a walk with him. And he will take a long detour because that was his exercise. Through, the, through that road, this road, crisscrossing. And during those walks, he would talk about everything, science, politics, philosophy, country, independence, Nehru, Patel. Well, he would talk about everyone. He would talk about building India. Through all that, you get transformed. Obviously, you don't have time. A person like CNR wouldn't have time for everyone like that. But he picks people, tells you. 
and you know as you go institutions like uh, indian institute of science you also see other men long ago indian institute of uh, science had another person called satish thawan satish thawan satish thawan had retired but one day satish thawan came and uh, i was walking by the side of the institution administrative office young student i don't know him or he doesn't know me of course he's a tall satish thawan comes and uh, pats you hey how are you doing what is what is actually your work tell me when you see these people you transform well there are many many people like these and i am not going to all of them and i went to berkeley you know in berkeley there was a giant person at that time he comes occasionally he used to come occasionally his name is sebob glen sebob this is a person who discovered nine elements of the periodic table nine elements of the periodic table and here is a person on whom there is an element named seaborgium and he comes sits next to you and you go to lecture halls and you see nobel laureates you sit with them and then you meet all of these people they all treat you like someone important and i can tell you one occasion i went to give a sample to somebody for a for some measurement you know this was picked up by a nobel laureate he comes and oh you this is a sample shall i take it and then you go to purdue university and you saw my post doctoral mentor there another great person but then you do great research you passionately get involved in all that but you are your 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 mind your heart is back home you want to come back because your 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 blood is much thicker and i keep telling people that your blood is much thicker you want to somehow come back do something in your country and you come back fortunately i was given four jobs i wrote to many institutions and nobody responded but one day i wrote a letter i was telling my wife what do i do if these people don't give me any job i used to tell her that you know i i know how to make omelets i make good omelets very good omelets. i would make gom omelets omelets at home sell but one day i wrote a plain letter plain letter to the director of indian institute of technology kanpur i am interested in a job is there something you know 3 months later i got an appointment letter i didn't have to go for an interview i got an appointment letter as a full time permanent position and the next uh, day i get a call from the head of the department when are you coming i will come to the railway station and pick you up but then i got a, a few other jobs they were temporary uh, but i came to a temporary job because i got all these tifr karakpur and all and madras is a temporary job and i asked professor rao what do i do all these jobs and i know professor rao kanpur is very dear because he was from that place he worked there he was the head of the department there he said you know iit madras is an idli sambar place Oh, change that place. So, I came to Madras. 
later became Chennai. But coming here, there was nothing. There was no infrastructure, no instruments, nothing. How do I do something? And in Chennai, whether you sit in a room and that, you know, that, that cooks you by the, around four o'clock, you're, you're, you're in a boiling condition and you do nothing, you get nothing out. You, got, you have no data, you have no results to be happy about. You are only have frustration. You don't have anything. So you come home, my wife opens the door and asks me, today also nothing happened, huh? Yes, nothing happened. And gradually, I asked my people, where do I build a lab? I build a lab. Show me a little place. There is no place. There is no place like that. There is a corner there. You know, all of us use that. Uh, build something there. And I go there. It was nothing but a table. Another table. Some glassware. How do I build a lab? Give me a small little room. And nobody gives me a room, but then I, then, you know, by some, a couple of months and a few months, you know, the tricks of the trade. I got a room open, which was junk and it was not used for long years. And he started a lab there. And my first uh, money was 48,000 rupees. My first computer was 63,000 rupees. So what do you do? It was a PCAT, you may not have seen many of you. And so you go to Velacheri, that is the city that is just outside the IIT gate. You use mechanics, machinists and all, you start build, making your machines. So I made my first spectrometer with close to about 10,000 rupees. This parts, you make machines with those. And I have preserved a small piece of that machine in the lab today. But over a period of time, you build many things. Today, my lab has many things, almost everything that you need for material science, a huge infrastructure, almost like a university's infrastructure I have. I have probably contributed 10 times or 20 times more to the nation in than the money that I have got, real monetary value. So it has been, it has been good, successful, one would say. But out there, there are many people who are even more successful, if this is a measure of success. But the biggest thing that I feel myself is that this is a kind of science, this kind of life that I do. I wouldn't sacrifice it for anything. This is... This is I didn't catch that. Could you try again? This is my life. I enjoy it. I enjoy every minute of it. So when I say that I enjoy this, I must say that there are people like Kaka who have enjoyed this even more. One message that I always keep to myself, I see messages like these are central. So let me get to those. My father used to say, my father was a school teacher, also a poet. He would ask me, fellow, there is something, one thing in the world over which nothing would ever fly. There is one thing in this world over which nothing would ever fly. Tell me what it is. I say this, I say that, I say whatever. No, no, it is not that. 
he said one thing over which nothing would ever fly is the written word it is the word over which nothing would fly get that and over which on that you have no nothing you know will sacrifice for that nothing well you will sacrifice everything for that you will never consider anything about that so fortunately for me that has been my my guiding spirit the second i would say is again from my father is that you can catch anything you can catch anything you can have great ambition whatever but you know once you think about all that and catch it but once you catch it you should never leave it so i am a person i am my perseverance is so big so i never leave anything so i start many things i would never leave any of them this is something i am sure kaka would boldly confess to you that that is the spirit with which the tolani institutions were built so i whether it is clean water research or instrument building or institution building or incidentally i do run a school as well so there are several things that we do all of this is that motivation you catch it never leave it and if you have the inclination to leave it at any point in time never start it the third thing that i have always tried to follow is that what is that education should give you education to me every i am a i am a scientist so as a result i write papers and papers get rejected naturally papers also get accepted proposals you write proposals get rejected proposals get accepted you get awards you don't get awards you get fellowships you don't get fellowships so always there are you always get criticism comments but what has education allowed me to become education has given me a great value that is resilience so i tell everybody that you can push me with whatever capacity that you have you can ask me any number of questions that you may have but you know my foundations are so strong that i will come back so you can push me against anything so what is that resilience and resilience is very easy to find and very easy to practice too all that you have to do is to buy a football and put you know put air in it fill it and throw a football at your at the floor and you see the football will come up you throw it even stronger it will come it will bounce back even to greater heights so i have always learned from football and any time i get criticism people shout at me i look at a football and you know i have a football in my lap and this is what i just moved 
this is what I do. And I look at this because this is a great motivation for me. And uh, so this is with, you know, you practice this every day. You look at this every day, then you have no reason to be unhappy about it. If this inanimate object can teach you, and education can teach you, just that we have to have the capacity to see. Water is a small molecule. It's just a triatomic molecule, H. O H H two O. But this contains so much. It is an ocean. It's an ocean. Just think about an ocean. It is the planet. This is the only thing that you will see if you go up to space and look at our planet. The only thing that you will see is this blue ocean. It's such a big thing, but it is just a molecule. Education has given us that power to see the molecule and the ocean simultaneously. This of course poetry gives you, art gives you, music gives you. I consider all of them to be the same. Fortunately, I saw great masters of letters around me. My neighbor got this year's Nana Pete, you know, this year's Nana Pete. He's, he just died. So fortunately, you see people like these around and people then ask me, sir, what is your advice? Well, your advice, I have always felt that that is the great advice that I can give, is to be with a company of good people. Good people. Good books, good music. So my wife asked me, you know, I, I, I hear most of the days I, I hear some Radangam. Radangam is a, is a percussion instrument, similar to Tabala, Radangam. But here is a great master of Radangam here in South India. His name is Palakkad Maniya. So you 10 minutes you hear Palakkad Maniya here, then all your, you know, the, everything disappears. Of course, there are many people like this. Around you, there are teachers, there are people like Kaka. So when you, you must have, the only thing that you should have is the capacity to listen. Capacity to be in the good company. So Indian Institute of Science gave me that company. I had lots of friends. They were condensed matter physicists, theoretical physicists, particle physics, chemistry, whatever. I had engineering, all kinds of engineering, material science, metallurgy. Never considered disciplinary barriers to be separating people. And I went with them. Almost all my fellowship went in the coffee shops. And that, of course, changed me. And I'm so glad that most of them won but Nagar prizes. So you don't really get transformed just because of the institution. You get transformed because of the people. Of course, institution got those people uh, closer to you. So what is that that you should do? Choose the institution, choose people around you, choose books around you. 
So when I was going back after my BSc, you know, during BSc days, I used to do one thing that was read one book a day. Those are small books, not very big, but libraries are full of books. Reading a book extra, one book extra, it doesn't cost you anything. Nothing. As uh, Dr. Kalam would say, dreaming wouldn't cost you. But then it, you need to read early. You need to read early because then you will get transformed. It's difficult. Of course, you can read later also, but it's difficult to get transformed. So in your 20s, you read, then you transform. So during my BSc the, or MSc, I had big luggage, you know, boxes to go back with. They were all books. And my luggage was always heavy. People would ask, what is that? You're, you're so heavy, you won't lift it. And, you know, you're supposed to get some clothing or something. No, my, my luggage is always books. Fortunately, books are very cheap. I didn't realize. People say books are expensive. No, books are very cheap. 60, 100 rupees, you can get a quality book. They're classics. So when you read one book, you know, what happens is, this is something that I probably I should tell you. In difficult times, where do you go? Difficult times, of course you can go. You can go and look at football. But difficult times, you can also go to books. Most difficult times, I go to one book. That book is The Discovery of India. In the difficult times, you read just a few pages of that. You don't have, because you're not reading a book in difficult times from page one to page 1000. No, you're reading a book in difficult times, just the 10 pages, five pages, one paragraph. But you pick any page, any paragraph, you will get inspired because this is the country speaking to you. And another great book, I'm, from, I'm a Malayali, you might have heard that. So there is a great um, writer who wrote about Mahabharat in my language. It's a small book, 250 pages. It's about a journey through Mahabharat. I don't know how many times I have read this, but this is a book, this is the only book I go, if I go abroad or something, a little book that I carry with me. Because at any point, in your struggles, you can go to one book. And we are fortunate that we have many such books. I picked this, but there are many other books. I also carry some of them. Uh, but books transform. Find that book. Find that companion. Find that friend. It's difficult. Professor Carlo would tell me. When you are old, 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 you have only just a few people to trust. But you get them early in life. You get them early. And then you transform. I suppose I have spent enough time. And the only thing that I want to tell you in terms of my research is that I take a problem and continue working with it despite struggles. So my problems are not done for one month, one year, two years, 
my problems are for decades. So today people know that I do this water, that water research and all that. It is now, it's now several decades now. So it is difficult to tell you all that story uh, in, in, in a short uh, while. But I work in the area of materials and materials to me is just as water I told you. It is, you can see many things in it. So I started seeing the power of materials through my research. And today these materials are used to create clean water. Our technologies have reached about 12 million people. They give arsenic free water every day to 1.2 million people. And that is, many people tell me that's a great thing. But there are many, many more things that one can do. And in a poor country like this, and if you come to my lab, you will see it is very rich with lots of instruments, lots of resources. But, but this, poor, this poor country allows you to do all that. It's a great joy. I would stop here. In case you have questions, I would like to take that. Uh, I have a formal presentation. I made that, but then I, it so happened that this, this became like this because Professor Graham Cooks came and then spoke about, uh, and it transformed and it became very emotional for me. Uh, and I hope that is what is the intention also to know a person. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in case you have questions, I would like to take that in the remaining time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Rajesh Thakkar for, for this invitation. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind interaction with us. I am 100% sure that students motivate from your inspirations, life journey, and do the best and some innovative in their life time. During the talk, we have received some questions on YouTube chat. I request Rajesh sir to put these questions. Please, sir. Thank you so much, Pradeep sir. I have no words of gratitude. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the direction of program has really changed. So, uh, may I request uh, Kalro sir for a bit of comments and then we can go to question answers. First of all, uh, I must uh, thank uh, Dr. Dr. for providing us into what has motivated him all these years to reach his goals, which are still being redefined in a way. But I, I think we should savor what he has said. We should try to internalize what he has said. And above all, we should put to practice what we can from what we internalize. And I don't want to actually spoil really by paraphrasing or trying to paraphrase madly the things that he has mentioned. But you know, a few things I want to say from my side, which actually strengthen my own belief about what we need to do as we progress in life. First and foremost, I would like to say that if you get an opportunity to learn, make the maximum usage or use of that opportunity and not on a selfish basis for yourself alone. Yes, you and your family can benefit from your knowledge and learn. But I think it is more important that we give back more than what we have received. This is very crucial. And 
we can become good educators not only when we educate ourselves well but we keep in mind the future generations whom we want to give that education to i want to repeat that education is not knowledge alone education is not being aware of what is happening in one's vertical domains or in one area of study and research education is not really simply maintaining a continuous pursuit of search for what i would like to define as the truth in our environment and in our lives but education i strongly believe is a strong amalgamation and amalgam of knowledge and behavior and to a large extent what was amplified in today's talk by professor pradeep was not about the knowledge element that was acquired and furthered it was a lot had a lot to do about behavior and the manner in which we conduct our lives these two together when integrated and given to the following generations that is our students and their students and so on actually builds really robust societies and that's what we are all really looking for we will be solving problems and more importantly we will be also be learning how to solve future problems when they do arise because one thing is certain there's no shortage of problems you solve one and a few more emerge and in this context i remember what my phd advisor at the university and my phd committee told me they said you know a good thesis is not what solutions it provides to the problems that you have really tried to address a good phd thesis is one which opens the window to so many other problems which need to be looked at and which get exposed by the work that you have done and you know so what professor pradeep told us he doesn't work on a project for a month or three months or a year it's almost like a lifetime commitment to that because you look at one problem you get some answers most of the time they are half truths because the rest of the truth is the new problems that are revealed but one thing is certain please please keep going and unless we have that commitment to keep on going whether there is failure or success is immaterial at this point of time to keep on going then only will the true achievement result and you know i really admire the japanese proverb it says climb to the top of the mountain and then climb higher it says it all thank you very much professor pradeep i really enjoyed listening to you and uh, i'm i'm sure that uh, i'll get hold of the recording to some parts my own hearing is not all that great now so i need to catch up on what was said but we do hope that we will get other opportunities to interact not only at the tolani vidya mandir but also with the other group of institutions with, with which i am now associated the amdavad education society and i think you know about us and uh, i'm i'm also sure that you know our current vice chancellor at yes, amdavad yeah. university yes yeah good yeah. but it's under so you will find ways and means of interacting further thank you very much and on behalf of the entire tolani family i convey our sincere thanks to you for sparing your time today to talk to us we are like in a wilderness and not too many people 
want to spend time with us. And you're one of those who did. And for that, we'll always be grateful. Thank you very much. Please, back to you. Okay. Thank you so much, Carlos, sir, for your inspiring remarks. And uh, sir, if you, uh, Pradeep, sir, if you permit, we have a small video again. Uh, we are going for it. Oh, respected teachers, dear students, and friends. I'm Dr. Abdul Mujib, retired professor and head department of chemistry and retired director, School of Chemical and Physical Sciences, University of Caligate. I would like to speak a few words about Patna Sri, Professor T. Pradeep. Professor Pradeep was a postgraduate student in Faru College, which is one of the top ranking colleges in the country and probably the largest residential autonomous college in the state of Kerala. While he was a student here, I was a junior faculty member in the college. Even at that time, we teachers have recognized Mr. Pradeep to be a multi-talented personality. He involved in all the student activities, including very strong political campaigning. And at the same time, he guided junior students in their studies. He has always kept utmost reverence to his teachers and his alma mater, which is proved by the highly noticed international seminar series he is organizing in the college. Much effort, time, and even money is put in by him into that. His doctor studies was at IAC Bangalore under Bharadrakna Professor CNR Rao, during which he was exposed to the expert eminent scientists all over the globe. And after a few postdoctoral programs abroad, he joined as a faculty member in IIT Madras. The thematic unit of excellence at IIT Madras, which he has established, stands testimony to the services he is rendering to the academics, research, and the society. His main interest is in the affordable, um, drinking water, clean water. During that journey, he has incubated a number of industries producing variety of nanomaterials. This, he, he, his unit has also produced a water generating machine generating water, taking water from the atmosphere. Similarly, when the pandemic uh, corona struck the nation, his uh, attention turned to the making of a simple oxygen generating machine by the electrolysis of water. He also presented it to the society. All this proves that he is a model, a motivating personality not only to students and teachers, but to all others in the society. On this occasion, let me wish and pray Professor Pradeep scales to still higher heights and remain for a long more uh, time in his service to the society. Thank you. Thank you all. Again, very surprising, very surprising. I didn't know this. <laughs> I don't know whether you are going to get my mother now. <laughs> uh, Thank you so much, sir. Um, in fact, now we have a series of questions, but we are running short of time. 
So we'll be presenting a couple of questions, um, uh, and it is very difficult to select the questions uh, uh, from the series of questions. But this is what comes to us first. That is from a teacher uh, who is a student over here, Miss Ashika Panikar, and her question is: What was your first win that made you confident that you were doing the right thing? The first win. First, what did you say? First, what was your first winning situation where you felt confident? Yeah. Well, uh, many things I would say that I didn't know that I will be a scientist. I wanted to be a teacher because I—that is all that I had seen. But gradually, I saw that I will be a professor when I. was doing phd i realized that i will be a professor so i would say what was that moment i thought that i would be someone good let me tell you an example one one incident so we were sitting in a conference hall and uh, professor sena rao was there i was a student second year phd or something lots of people sitting and somebody is giving a lecture somebody is giving a lecture very prominent person gives a lecture cna ras questions somebody else asks questions then professor rao turns around ready you have a question okay then i realize that this is something there are he feels that i can ask something and there are many such occasions that uh, gives you that kind of a confidence that you are someone important special i would say i can give you many examples but this is one such turning point thank you another question and uh, that is from our alumni uh, chandni uh, being from small place of india how did you dream of going to place like iis bangalore i didn't know about iis i didn't know about iits uh, i didn't know so i did a msc as i told you and i realized that i know nothing and i went to the university and asked a, a professor there said i would like to do a phd i think i don't know anything about chemistry so tell me he said you can do a phd here but i think this is not the place for you you should go to indian institute of science go there so that's how i went yeah so <clears throat> one more question yeah Yes. One more question from Unam Gaur. She is our MSc student. She is really inspired from your words and your experience in life. And she has a question: How you make a great balance in your professional life and your social life? for me life is only one thing uh, i would say whatever i do i have only one face i don't have two wives uh, no 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 you know i have only one life and my life is what you see behind me my life is what you see ahead of me my lab and all that i see this my students uh, i have only one life and it is i would say it is fully engrossed in this and sometimes people say that i lose my my life but sometimes i tell them that this is my life and it has everything in it i am fortunate that my parents understood that i am fortunate that my wife understood that and uh, i i am so fortunate that my students understand that my children understand that my institution understands that and 
in a way, it is not an understanding that has happened. I, I would also say that I am contributing to their understanding to say that, well, this is what I am. Please take it this way that I, this is this is what I am. And therefore, I have no time for marriage celebrations for my family members. I have no time for many, many such things, unfortunately. But they understand this and therefore my, my people don't call me. That is what I can say. Yes, sir. We'll take the last question because uh, as we see time is uh, ending up. Uh, that is from a chemistry professor from our college, uh, Professor Dinesh Kundaria that uh, at UG level laboratories at our colleges, uh, which type of work is possible to start? Well, uh, every lab has challenging questions can be addressed with minimum resources. Uh, however, that needs extraordinary minds to see them. So these days, I do get occasionally some papers coming from small colleges where they do extraordinary research with small equipment, but that number is very small. You need extraordinary people uh, to think about problems that can be addressed with minimum infrastructure. And I know that all of you are super busy also with a lot of activities. Uh, online has not only, well, it has increased activities. I, I understand that. So with all that, how do you manage your time? Uh, if you can, and if you can think bigger, uh, I can uh, talk to you in detail as to what are the, those problems that you can do but I would say that these are research related questions of this kind. The problems should not come from someone else. You need to discover those problems on your own. One thing I should say uh, now that it is ending, one turning point, I have started many companies and incubation and all that you might have, people have told you. One reason I think looking back, is that I was a mechanic. And we had a small farm and we used to irrigate our land with a diesel engine, a three horsepower diesel engine. And I used to start that diesel engine. You have to do, you know, you have to start that. But the diesel engine sometimes fails. And it takes, you need to get a mechanic some six or seven kilometers away, you know, from such a place to take time. And the mechanic is busy. So you become a mechanic. I open the engine, I fix the engine. Every time I am the mechanic and not just mechanic for this machine, I'm a mechanic for every machine. And I, this is something I felt that it changed me because I like to feel the smell of oil. I like to open the nuts and bolts and, uh, and the gears and all that. I enjoyed it. I saw the early lessons of thermodynamics in that. I saw design in that. I saw manufacturing in that. So my advice to you is also that while all these books and all that are important, please get your hands dirty. And the more dirty it becomes, your learning gets better. So in my lab, no machine fails, no machine. It's a very complicated lab and all that, but nothing fails. 
not that I am an electronics engineer or whatever. It's just that I would like to get my hands dirty. Thank you. That's all the one additional point I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Anjali Srivastav, Assistant Professor, Mathematics Department at our college, for the purpose of what of things. Anjali, ma'am. Joy is the simplest form of gratitude. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to express our gratitude to everyone for attending this function of our college and making it memorable. I, Anjali Srivastava, on, on the behalf of Gandham Collegiate Board and Tolani College of Arts and Science, express my sincere thanks to Professor P. Pradeep, who spared his valuable time from his very busy schedule for our program Meet the Prasad. Sir, today we had an opportunity to hear your life struggle and your thoughts. This is surely going to encourage us in our future journey of life. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path. My special gratitude to Professor E. H. Cardo, sir, for gracing the event and blessing us today. I express my deep sense of gratitude to Professor Krupp, Purdue University, and the, Dr. Mujib for Calicut University. I extend my most sincere thanks to Madam Anjana Hazare for blessing us and encouraging to do something new. I would like to thank all GCB members for their support and unconditional help. I am thankful to our respected principal sir, Dr. Sushil Dharmani, for being the catalyst to stimulate us to do our best. With deep sense of appreciation, we thank our alumni, Mr. Kajal Chaya, Ms. Mr. Kaushal Chaya and Mrs. Kajal Chaya for the beautiful prayer and also the YouTube channel, Devi Agada for the melodious flute music. We also thank Tolani Commerce, Commerce College for their technical support. I also extend my thanks to all members of Tolani Commerce College, Tolani family for their boosting presence. I would also like to thank the students who worked behind the scene to make this event happen, our technical arrangement team without whom this event cannot be live, and all the musician and media persons. Last but not the least, the big thank, a big thank you to all of you who made this program memorable and resounding success. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your warm words. I think that you all enjoyed the program, but now it's time to end the program. Finally, I would like to invite uh, Rajesh sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, it was, uh, we, we felt like being on the other world. So thank you so much, uh, Pradeep sir. Thank you so much, Carlos sir. And thank you all viewers. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.